Welcome back to Power Electronics EE444. And in this video, we continue on with our series of, with resident DC to DC converters. And we will be looking and analyzing the resonance or the tank circuit for our series LC converter. Here's an overview of the video. First, we're going to review resonance and develop the impedance of the tank circuit. Then I'm going to derive a normalized equation for that impedance, and we can glean some information out of that normalized equation. Then we'll finish by reviewing the impedance when we drive our tank circuit at a frequency that's greater than the resonant frequency and at a frequency that is less than resonance. And we'll see that uh, at frequencies greater than resonance, we have an inductive load and less we'll have a capacity. So recall from our generalized topology of resonant converters, it contains three building blocks. The front end is the DC to AC converter, and we control the switching frequency of that AC output signal. We feed that power signal into a resonant circuit that has a resonant frequency F sub zero, and that's what we're going to analyze in this video. Here's our circuit topology. We show a half bridge series LC resonant converter. And in another video, we're going to show how we can replace the load resistance or the, the load and the transformer with an equivalent resistance R sub E. And for this video, I'm going to assume we've already done that. And here's our equivalent circuit. Let me switch over to the one note to derive the input impedance or the impedance of this circuit. It's called a tank circuit. Here's our source, which is the half bridge generating the square wave. The input impedance is a function of our switching frequency omega, and it's equal to one over J omega times CR plus J omega L plus RE. We can rearrange this equation into the real part plus the imaginary part. The resonant frequency is the frequency at which our imaginary part is equal to zero and our impedance is purely resistive. We can solve for that by solving for this equation and setting that equal to zero. The value of omega, as you've learned in your circuits class, is equal to one over the square root of the inductance times the capacitance. Recall you may have also learned another term called the 3 dB bandwidth. And for series LRC circuits, it's equal to the resistance divided by the inductance. Another term which we use to sometimes normalize the equation, is called the quality factor. The quality factor is equal to omega naught divided by the bandwidth. We can use this to find an equation where Re over L sub R is equal to omega naught divided by Q, or... LR divided by RE is equal to Q divided by omega naught. We're going to use this equation in a bit because I'd like to normalize the impedance equation for our tank circuit. In a similar manner, we can show that Q times omega naught is equal to 1 over CR times RE. And again, I'm going to use that when we normalize the impedance equation. So let's go back to the impedance for our tank circuit. And let me factor out our E. Using the equations for omega naught and Q, I can substitute those into our impedance equation, and we obtain
One more step is the factoring out of Q, and we have a normalized form of our impedance equation. There's one more step, and in this step, I'm going to define F sub n. It is a unitless normalized frequency variable, and it's equal to our switching frequency, and that is the frequency at which we will drive our resonant tank circuit divided by the resonant frequency itself. This is also equal to 2 pi f of our switching frequency, which is omega, divided by 2 pi f0, again, which is our, our resonant frequency in radians per second. So that is equal to our switching frequency divided by our resonance. Therefore, our impedance normalized to the quality factor Q and the normalized frequency F sub n is equal to There's a couple of observations we can make from this impedance equation. First, if f of n is greater than 1, this implies that our switching frequency is greater than our resonant frequency. And for this case, our imaginary term will be positive, or f sub n minus 1 over f sub n will be greater than 0. When our switching frequency is greater than our resonant frequency, the imaginary part is positive, and this implies that we have an inductive load to our source. And in an inductive load, recall that our current lags our voltage. And this means that when we are switching our voltage on our DC to AC inverter, our current is still going to be slightly positive. That's actually good because recall from the previous video that that positive current was used in the flyback body diodes to force the drain to source to zero. And that helps support zero voltage switching. Also notice that if our normalized frequency is less than one, that implies that we are switching at a rate that is less than our resonant frequency and we have a capacitive load. In a capacitive load, our current will be leading the voltage and therefore the current will reverse the direction before the voltages switch and we will not be able to utilize zero voltage switching or near, near zero voltage switching on the MOSFETs. And when f of n is equal to 1, we are switching at resonance. And in that case, our current and voltage are perfectly in phase, and we will be switching at the same point where our current is zero, and that is that will support zero current switching. So ideally, for most loads, we want to ride, we want to operate in a slightly inductive uh, uh, switching arrangement. So oftentimes with resonant converters, series resonant converters, our switching frequency is going to be slightly greater than our resonant frequency to ensure that we have zero voltage switching as well as close to zero current switching too. As a recap, we just derived the input impedance to the tank circuit and we normalized it and found that that impedance was equal to RE, the equivalent load resistance that is reflected back from the bridge and the transformer, times 1 plus JQ, the quality factor, times the normalized frequency F sub N minus 1 over F sub N. And we know that the quality factor, while I didn't show it here, it can be proven, is equal to the square root of the inductance L sub R divided by the capacitance C sub R all over RE. And we know that the resonant frequency is 1 over the square root of LR times CR. And the normalized frequency 
is equal to the switching frequency at which we drive the circuit divided by the resonant frequency. The key points, we introduce the quality factor and a normalized frequency variable F sub n. At resonance, the voltage and current are in phase and this applies zero current switching. We will be switching the voltage and the current at near zero states. When switched at a frequency that is slightly higher than resonance, the load is inductive and the current is lagging the voltage. This provides current through the off MOSFET body diode, which we showed qualitatively in that earlier video, and that creates a near zero voltage switching condition. So we typically like to operate uh, our LC or our LLC resonant converters in a slightly inductive uh, load uh, situation. And so we'll often provide a switching frequency that's slightly higher than resonance in these types of converters. That's resonance. Thank you for watching.